performance, we have Dr. Sebastián García Saizo from EIH and Dr. Dave Fitzgerald of HSS. This introduction, of course, is not for the people from PAHO, PAHO or from, but from the, for the colleagues that are in some of the countries. Without further ado, we are going to ask, please, Dr. Garcia Saizo that is going to have to leave a little bit quickly because he's in another activity to please provide your welcome awards so we can start the meeting. Go ahead, please. And thanks a lot, Bremen. And good morning, good afternoon, and colleagues. It's a pleasure to be here and to be able to have this conversation about a topic that has been prioritized in the uh, uh, inner cooperation agendas and that is also part of this focus that is established by the director of Barbosa about the, the pillars about how we build a prioritized agenda in the recovery post pandemic and how we learn from what we have built even before the pandemic. And I am talking specifically about this focus towards improving data and the information that we are generating in a topic of uh, the highest relevance that we have in our region, that is maternal uh, mortality. And this implies having more uh, better data for decision-making and building policies focused and uh, on closing these gaps. As you know, in this prioritization, we need to think that we not only need the general data about what happens in a national context about um, maternal de deaths, but also what happens in specific cases that helps us build the initiatives that are necessary to stop this, this uh, problem. And that's what this uh, search has to do about, this intended search where we are looking not only to improve our national menu, but also enter into the data that help us know in a better way the causes for these maternal deaths and in this way uh, establish some solutions for this problem as you know this is one of the areas with the most impact in the years of the pandemic where they are talking about a setback of at least 10 years in the values that we have of mortality uh, maternal mortality and uh, which implies a need of improving our data and decision making and the alternatives to reduce this and retake the progress that we had before the pandemic this is part of an inter-program uh, work that we've had for several years in mexico this initiative has at least two decades and um, and we have had great results. And what we are looking with this uh, restating is that uh, the, in this country, even those that have good uh, statistics regarding maternal death, maternal mortality can improve the data and the way they collect this data and the details about these actions. I select this work in, in, with the colleagues as part of the example that we can do at home in this uh, work programmatic and the importance of this punctual work that we are having by each of you that are in each of the countries and that is the center of the instruction that we need today how can we take this topic within the technical cooperation that we have with the countries and of course this also as a direct topic of cooperation amongst the countries well, I'm thankful with all of you. I'm eager to check all the support that we have required from EIH and uh, my colleagues also from CLAP and EIH that we have worked in for so many years and that takes us to this point. So thanks a lot and have a great day. Thanks a lot, Dr. Sebastián García Saizo. And now we are going to uh, ask the welcome words from the Director of uh, David Cheryl, Director of the Department of Systems and uh, Health Services. Go ahead, Dr. James. Thanks a lot, Bremen. It's a pleasure to see you, Susani, as well, Director of CLAP, Sebastian. Thanks a lot also, Sebastian, and all the team from IAH. EIH for all the, the support for this important initiative. So as uh, Sebastian mentioned well, the key information for decision making is what we need. And in there we are offering, uh, we are facing a very specific context regarding the availability of information, concrete information 
based on the deep analysis of the context of the health systems and capability of these systems to answer about a mortality. Many of the, of much of the work that is done in the country is based on this and the estimations because taking into account disaggregation of information is complex, difficult, and all the necessary strategies, even at the level of the territory institutional level with human resources, uh, health service that we need to provide an adequate answer in the health system. Yeah, so this is an area of high importance for the answer of the or integral organization to reduce the maternal death in the region. So we are working and leaving now the pandemic uh, with this new strategy to reduce the maternal death in the region. And this is a key strategy to strengthen the capabilities of the countries to identify the causes, reasons, the places and the instructions that have a particular uh, Uh, to improve the uh, specific things in this context. And this is a joint work that we need to do, not only at the PHO, but also at the level of the countries, together with the experts and entities responsible for the information systems for health, together with the health services and the territories and the other countries. And, and it has to be a serious platform to face this huge challenge that we are facing and we are going to improve this uh, situation in each country. So congratulations everyone for this new initiative, Bremen, Cisani, IAH, and together we are going to work to provide the necessary support for each country. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Dr. Dave Fitzgerald. I'd like to tell you before we go to the main presentation that as you will mention, Dr. Sebastian, Dr. James, that is a, an inter-program work from the beginning. The other part that is not visible because it is a very low profile kind of person that is Dr. Antonio Savuesa, that is a part uh, leading this work uh, since the IAH um, area and is going to be participating in the next few minutes, but I would like to clarify that he, he's a key part of this process. And as you can see, this is an inter-program uh, work. And for this, we hired a specialist that is supporting the um, countries and is something that is being financed by both departments, which makes it more interdepartment because it is easier when we say we work together however the resources are provided only by one side in this case actually we are providing this from both departments without further ado because we are a little bit behind i'd like to ask dr aline jimenez to please take the floor so you can uh, show everyone the methodology that many of you already know but we have uh, several countries that we that don't have it uh, actually included. Go ahead, Aline, please. Thanks a lot, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be here together with you all. And I'd like to thank this space and thank everyone that took you time from your very busy agendas to be part of this session and to get to know and recognize this extremely important topic. I'm going to share my screen now. And well, first of all, I'd like to mention and insist in everything that has been mentioned about this topic of intended search for uh, about maternal death it has always been a priority for the organization is something that has been handled and we have had a cooperation in different areas from uh, 2015 and this is extremely important to insist and the final objective of this search is to support 
the reduction of these maternal deaths. And we might think, how is it possible to get with a methodology that from the beginning looks for uh, find these maternal deaths that were hidden behind a uh, bad registry, bad information, invisible to our eyes. How is it possible? Because it is an increase, momentaneous increase of the data. How can it end in a reduction at a medium uh, period of this maternal reduction? And uh, that, that is part of what I would like to answer in this presentation. Talking really about the burn, uh, I will say it can be done in five minutes and it can be done in five hours. For me, it is a challenge to be able to transmit the importance and, or, and specifically the importance of this topic, uh, aside from the component, how is this uh, done without but, but it's very important to live in our conscious, the importance of doing this. And precisely starting with this topic of importance, we'll know that maternal deaths, when they take place in a high percentage, you can see the evidences of coverage, uh, access and quality of health services. And this is the key part of the why we study maternal deaths as we do. Why we have these committees for maternal deaths where we study each one of the cases to make sure which were the causes that led to the to death to a, a woman that didn't have to a reason to die because pregnancy is not a disease and we are not uh, expecting the death of a pregnant woman. And that's why we say that most of these maternal deaths are avoidable. And that is why, and that is the fundament and the base of why we study them. Because most of the times when we study a maternal death, we can find uh, problems in the health system. Uh, failures that uh, through an action plan we can improve. And with this, we can avoid more maternal deaths. Uh, and not only maternal deaths, but also another uh, death that, that happens due to the lack of supplies. And, and in here, I'm going to mention something very basic regarding when, for instance, there are no uh, supplies to stop a hemorrhage or where we, when we don't have an ambulance, when we see that, when we have a case of maternal death and we have a plan and implement it, I'm going to make sure that this ambulance is always going to be available from now on in this place. And this is not only going to avoid a maternal death, but all other deaths that could require this supply. And uh, this is what can bring us the base of why we study this and why is it important that in each case of maternal death needs to be studied. Because if we leave one of these cases aside, then probably we are going to leave some problems without a solution. And this is going to lead us to have another maternal death for the same causes. So within that context is extremely important and it might be uh, something that have been said a lot, what is important to measure to improve? But in this specific case, it is not only about measuring just for the sake of it, but we need to make sure that we are having correct uh, measurements, that we are studying all the maternal deaths and that took place to solve the situations that led to this maternal death and avoiding more. And in this way, making sure that this maternal death reduces, is really reduced. And well, precisely here, I'd like to share this uh, with you. And I'd like this to stay in your mind while we are in this talk. And is that each maternal death sub-registered is an opportunity that we lose to improve the health system. And in this context, well, at a world level, we, we recognize the problem that we have to have a good quality of information to avoid maternal deaths. On the one hand, because of sub-registry, but the, in the biggest amount of cases in most of the countries that have information that is considered by of quality is due to a bad classification. Same here, in this uh, topic, we could have or we could take actually one hour explaining which are these factors that can cause a sub-registry 
that is still present in some of the countries, even in our region. And same thing happens when we think about the factors that lead to having a bad classification. However, we don't have the time for this to enter into depth in each one of these. And it's important uh, to mention that we have uh, several factors here and of different uh, characteristics and natures. The registry comes from cultural factors, especially in certain populations and limitations that the state generates at some point is not intentionally generated, but it, that doesn't make it easy to provide a correct registry, like the distance from the uh, medical units where we have doc, uh, physicians and the uh, offices for a civil registry where they can provide the registry, the death certificate for the population. And that is the importance of providing some registry. But if we go to bad classification, we also have multifactorial, uh, multifactor uh, causes from the lack of knowledge when filling the information in the death certificate where they don't forget to mention the uh, state of pregnancy of a woman and is submitted in the certificate up to mistakes that have to do with coding and selection of basic costs when they don't have training, uh, proper training from the coders from the CA10. And why not to mention, obviously there is also some cases of deliberate hiding that on one hand is can be caused due to what we say perverted incentives that sometimes the Ministry of Health places without this intention, of course, but providing some prices to a hospital that in a whole year didn't have a maternal death. And if this hospital at the end of the year has a maternal death, could be tempted to hide in this up to things that have to do with punishable uh, reasons when there is a maternal death, for instance, against the team that uh, were, was part of this medical attention. So it is a multi-factor reason and the most of them in a certain percentage are present in our countries. And that's why in a way or another, most countries have to work together in improving the quality of data regarding maternal death, trying to save all of these uh, topics. And well, this is only going to be mentioned in a tangential way, but it's part of what has been done in order to try to solve this sub-registry that is in most of the uh, countries, this interagency group that is uh, generated by different international organizations that try to create an estimate that kind of solves this uh, sub-registry and tries to measure as close as possible to reality the maternal death. And with the objective, of course, of monitoring and trying to make sure that the compliance of this um, sustainable development uh, objectives. And this is a transitory solution, and I call it like that. Obviously, this is the berm because, um, well, basically, this is transitory because the real solution that is going to, let me go back, the real solution would be to make sure that none of these factors should be present. That would be the final solution. Every physician should be uh, trained always regarding filling this death certificate. Each coder should also be aware of how to select the basic cause in the case of a maternal death, that there is no deliberate hiding and that the population would have the possibility of registry and sensibilization. And here we have to work and the organization is doing so in improving these aspects. However, this is going to take a long time working regarding the plan of basic statistics. And that's why I insist the transitory solution. And for several years, the first thing that we started doing were some periodical exercises of Ramos to estimate the sub-registry of maternal death and evaluate progress. The problem with these exercises is that regularly they were periodical exercises that were done every five years even that didn't allow really 
when we found a maternal death case that was hidden, didn't let us study it and do something to avoid the real causes that led this woman to death and improve the health system. On the other hand, what this did is towards what we are going to, uh, as it was mentioned by Dr. Sebastian, almost for 20 years that we've started this search uh, um, progress in Mexico is to implement in, in general, this Ramos uh, methodology in a way that is executed continuously in the countries. So when we find maternal deaths hidden behind a bad registry, we can study them and we can even establish actions that allow us to work on this uh, maternal death index. So this is going beyond the numbers. Obviously, when we think about intended search is, well, this is to have good numbers. Yeah, of course, we already mentioned about quality of information and to make sure that we are counting all maternal deaths, but this goes beyond that. And what we want is to make sure that all maternal deaths are studied. We identify a search plan and we execute it um, in order to avoid having more maternal deaths for those causes. And in that way, and that's why in that way in Mexico, in the general uh, direction of information, the Mexican Center for Classification of Diseases 20 years ago, started this intentional and intended uh, search for causes of maternal death that has this objective of uh, aff affecting this um, registry correct the problems that might be there and getting frustrating uh, information that can prevent and can generate a diminution of these maternal deaths. After several years of uh, proved success of this intended search, where precisely one of the great achievements was that at some point this interagency group stopped creating estimates of the statistics, national statistics in Mexico, they recognized the uh, numbers that the country was uh, providing. And it's then that uh, PAHO, that PHO started, uh, of course, with the support of the center. And I'd like to thank, of course, infinite thanks for this support regarding um, uh, this implementation and option in the countries in the region, of course, uh, they, they start spreading. And I said in 2015, this uh, methodology. So in general terms, and of course, we don't have all the time to get into details, but I'd like to mention that BERM has four different stages, four different processes. The first one, and this is extremely important because sometimes we think that the BERM is only the second component, identification and research of suspicious cases. But the BERM has a first component that is fundamental and is to make sure that all maternal deaths that have been confirmed, even those that were confirmed from the beginning, that in the death certificate, is uh, specified that it was a maternal death or that they entered in the uh, in immediate uh, notification center to make sure that those deaths that were studied already are classified in the best way. And I can assure you that a high percentage of maternal deaths when they are checked by the team of experts from the BIRM are reclassified. It means that probably it changes the fourth digit of the code generated as a basic course. However, it provides an adjustment extremely specific of quality regarding classification. And many times due to lack of knowledge, um, they can change. And there can be some important changes in a classification of a maternal death that might have been uh, notified and analyzed in the committees. And well, that is the first component, obviously the second component of research of suspicious cases, that is the core of the BIRM, also has a component where they can make sure or are taking advantage of all external information so we can contribute to finding these maternal deaths and even some suspicious cases. And finally, and not less important to make sure that each exercise is always having an annual uh, investigation of results and the statistical analysis of it. 
I'm not going to get into detail in this part. However, I'd like to mention a few important parts in everything that has to do with reclassification of uh, confirmed deaths. That is the first component of the BIRM. And it is extremely relevant, not only the documentation, to have all documentation, for instance, that can be used in the committees of maternal death to make sure there is a good classification. However, also to make sure that this uh, selection of the base cause can be done by experts in this area. The basic death of the death, sadly, in some cases, gets to be chosen in a clinical way in the committees when the committees let's say uh, should provide a reclassification of this cause a uh, causal chain of death and then make sure that an expert coder of ca10 selects the basic cause of death and why is it important and why do i mention this because this is what warranties that there is comparability amongst countries to continue and i'm not going to explain this again but to continue with this process so we can find the base cause of death as it is established by the uh, who in the ci10 and make sure that this data is compatible amongst countries and of course also within the countries themselves on the other hand also regarding the identification of suspicious cases i'd like to be precise and to mention that even though the most important part of this process is the search for suspicious cases and according to a list of causes that have been previously identified in a percentage that is uh, considerable can be had in a maternal death for instance uh, hypovolemic shock and acute abdomen and a list of causes in women in fertile ages is not the only way to look for suspicious cases and this is the only thing that i would like to leave for now clear in this section the second component i'm not going to mention up in detail but only number one that you see there uh, has to do with the search for suspicious cases based on the list that we call it the ramos the modified ramos list really the methodology that we have been shared is based on taking advantage of other information other kinds of searches within the information we have so we can find other suspicious cases not only with this list that I'm mentioning, that even though it's the most important or the most uh, important part of this identification of suspicious cases. Obviously, after the identification of suspicious cases, we have to recover certain evidences so we can distinguish, separate and say that this case it can be discarded as maternal death or after having a uh, uh, an oral autopsy, we can confirm that it was a maternal death. Once this identification is done, it is important to know that what follows is to make sure that this maternal death has a, a treatment that is similar to a maternal death that could be notified in the notification, immediate notification system. What does it mean that this death is analyzed in the committee and that has to do with maternal deaths to identify causes to have an action plan and to make sure that one death regarding these causes takes place again. And regarding uh, comparing with other sources, what is relevant here that I would like to highlight is that we must make useful information that we have available regarding attention that was provided to a pregnant woman or in the last quarter because it's going to help us cross generate cross information and confirm suspicious maternal deaths or even detect suspicious additional suspicious cases on the other hand also important and i always highlight this to make sure that the berm exercise is done together with the official information provided by the country and as the last component of the verm is the creation of this uh, yearly report of course it should be sent officially so at some point it can be 
taking into account in the estimation exercises provided by the interagency team. Now, just a few more slides that I wanted to check with you guys. Um, you can see here, and we could see this as the internal framework of maternal death, where we see a not immediate notification and this status and the committees of course the answer to avoid more deaths and future deaths all of this and the capturing of uh, deaths in this is all the information provided in the search that is also the filter that makes sure that is only one number of maternal deaths in the country that it can be made sure that is okay. And lastly, which are the necessary supplies to adopt the Burma? Even though you might not believe it, the most important part is not to have the capabilities to implement them. The most important part is to have a sensibilization, acceptance and support from the authorities. And this is, as it was mentioned before, um, there is going to be uh, a high in the numbers of maternal deaths. Why? Because we are going to start counting the real number of maternal deaths. But this is just uh, something temporary, is part of the way towards the real reduction. And on the other hand, the uh, coordination of the personnel in charge of this. What am I looking for here? We are looking for finding. And other important parts, make sure that the process is done uh, with the correct normativity. This regarding all the people that have to be part of this methodology to make sure we have the availability of information within the Ministry of Health. There are three main areas that may should be part of this systems of information in health, maternal health and epidemiology. At some point, we should involve also the Institute for Statistics for the real number or the entity that has the possibility to of make official these numbers. And of course, to make sure that we have strengthened capabilities. And with this, I'd like to thank really that you heard me here and I give back the microphone, I give back the floor. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Eline. And well, in truth, it is a lot of material all together to be processed. And I would like to ask you to stop sharing your screen. Perfect. I'm going to share just one thing so we can open and have some space for questions and answers that I believe is the most important thing today. And also some comments. Together with Antonio and Delini, we've um, prepared a roadmap of how we think we could be working here. I apologize, I lost what I was going to share. You see my screen here, right? No. Not really, okay, perfect. For those that answer through the chat, I'm going to share Let's see, okay, perfect. Uh, really, we don't need these slides. Let me tell you directly. So what we've established is that we wanted today to show you what the verm was about. Obviously with this, it is not enough. However, in the next steps, what we want to try to determine is to reach the interest expression that the ministries of health might have to implement the burn and the support that they might need from the main offices. And in this uh, work, what we would thank you is the, uh, in the cases when you are discussing the colleagues from the PHO with the colleagues in the countries that they have an interest on in this to send an email directly to Antonio Sangüesa or to me or one of us. But it would be first to have Antonio and me to see some interest uh, after we register the interest from the countries that uh, talk with us. The first thing we are going to do is to organize some online meetings to start with the first steps. These first steps have to do mainly with the creating a coordination team of VIRM in the country that it should not be a thousand people, just the minimum amount is okay. And on the other hand, what we should do is to develop an, a work plan 
where it is important for the country to see it involving all the different areas that should be present and that Aline showed. And finally, uh, to finish this, when everything is, uh, is working, to put this work on the field. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, there are two things that we need to know. The, the Paravin um, team is reduced. The, the Burm team is uh, reduced. And if two countries wanted to work on Burm, we couldn't provide a, a direct answer right away. That's why we need to prioritize and to see the demand. And in second place, and I believe that it, this is central, is that we support with everything that has to do with technical cooperation from the uh, main uh, the headquarters of the PHO. But whoever, whoever wants to do, to do this work needs to warranty the financial support to provide the local meetings. So we needed to put everything together with Antonio, uh, these uh, final um, words about this. Antonio, would you like to provide a final remarks? Uh, it seems that he has his microphone on mute. You're on mute, Antonio. All right. Right. I was just saying that it was perfect, everything that you said. So we should proceed with the questions. Go ahead. Um, so I give you, Antonio, the opportunity to receive the questions and we are going to answer them together. We don't see any questions in the chat. We don't see hands risen. Good afternoon for some of you. Good morning from some others. My name is Susan Sehuja, the director of perinatology. And I have a question. And um, before we close, I'd like to first of all, thank Aline for her excellent um, presentation. And I would like to say that, yeah, of course, we are going to send There are several people asking, where can they find the materials and references? And, and I believe that Bremen, Antonio, Aline is something we should answer. And now I, ha I see some hands up. So I'm going to shut up now. Um, thanks a lot, Susan, for your, for your comment. We have four people registered. And we are going to answer what they were saying. So the first person, please take note, is Victoria Bertolino, then Raul Medrano, then Karen Raquel, and finally, Humberto Flores. So Victoria, go ahead, please. And thanks a lot, Bremen. I cannot, I don't know why I cannot uh, connect my camera. I don't know why I, I can't show my camera. Well, thanks a lot. First of all, congratulations. I'd like to say that it is a huge step towards the berm. We had the experience in Argentina. First of all, we had it, of course, in the political uh, will is the first. We did it in a province as a pilot, and then we advanced to reach all the country with a huge commitment. And I believe it's truth. Of course, as Aline mentioned, uh, first, the numbers are going to rise, of course. However, then there is uh, some commitment even from the country to provide and maintain policies that are more fit towards reduction. So I'd like to congratulate you, Bremen. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Now we have Raul Medrano. He decided to say that his question was answered, so we are going to continue with Karen. Hello, good morning. How are you? Uh, my name, uh, I'm Karen from Nayarit, Mexico. I'm a psychologist, and there was a time where we had the opportunity to be part of the BIRM committee. And uh, something that we detected there was that many of the women that passed away, that died after this period of 42 days, classif classified by BIRM, had had gestational losses. 
so around and this is something that is not exact now that was something that was mentioned before by um, master aline regarding the uh, publishing part and the published part we calculate that 40 percent of the cases that we analyzed had some uh, gestational losses and these were women that looked for getting pregnant um, before a year and the next pregnancy was done um, um, well and finally they passed away so now with this strategy that we have we started this strategy as a preemption of detection of um, gestational losses and to cover that so the intergenetic uh, period is longer and to provide a preemption not only the maternal but also the perinatal part trying to work with these uh, women that were having this loss uh, they could accept maybe um some prevention and widen this uh, time in mexico the this um normative says it has to be two years and what we are trying to implement in mexico is at least one year at least one year after this obstetric event and uh, passing away of the baby if this was a uh, gestational loss so we can have this impact with the women and it's something that we are training for thanks a lot karen um something i'd like to do is to strengthen i don't know how or where to have real statistics and to have this this support thanks a lot well go ahead umberto Umberto, you have your microphone on mute. Yep, uh, yeah, you can hear me now, right? Okay, perfect. First of all, I'd like to thank for this uh, invitation, this opportunity you gave us to be part of this training. I believe it's extremely important and vital because I really understand that the need of this strategy. My question is uh, developed countries really don't have a need for this strategy for this activity thanks a lot for this very specific and concrete question well alini i would give you the floor two main questions this last one that said that umberto mentioned antonio in this knows a lot more than i do and he could answer and the first one where would they ask a bibliography and uh, references for the verm so alini and antonio go ahead please and answer well thanks a lot regarding bi bibliography you can find everything in the web page of the general direction of information of the mexican government in the mexican uh, center for classification of diseases we have all the reports that we have published regarding berm also, the organization, the PHO PAHO, has the website of RELAXIS, that is a compendium of the information that has to do with this methodology. And on the other hand, I was saying that the problem regarding the registry of maternal death is worldwide, even the estimates and the interagency group does estimations to countries of the first world that they are not doing an active search uh, process. There is always a possibility that there is a sub-registry of a maternal death because there are factors that many times cannot be controlled. For instance, I was mentioning a new doctor, a new physician that for some reason didn't have a training of the correct feeling of this death certificate and doesn't know how important it is to mention that uh, women and, uh, had preeclampsia six months before and died because of, of uh, um stroke and we could have a uh, late uh, maternal death so that's why berm is important to be implemented in all countries this is at least what i'd say thanks yeah, i'd like to confirm what elena was saying that there is a need that each country should implement the berm 
Now I'm going to take advantage just to insist in, on something that Bremen mentioned at the beginning, that any of the countries that wants technical support from those of us that are supporting this initiative, please, please, we have sent as a, set as a maximum uh, data uh, deadline um, uh, June. Um, so uh, for those that want this support, please send us a message. And it's important to insist that it's not only for implementation, but also to strengthen what the country is doing. So I believe it's important that we can adapt to the needs that the country might, countries might have. And this part is part of the work that we might do. Well, we have a few minutes and I'm going to try to get some of the questions in the chat as my uh, friend from CLAM sent me, Melina. And well, we'd like to mention everyone that asked questions. We are going to check this recording. If we can't answer them in this space, we're going to answer them later. One of the questions says, is there going to be a repercussion uh, against the physicians that look for the cause of um, maternal death? Well, I'd say Burm is not a problem here. The physicians, we as physicians and doctors, physicians, um, nurses, uh, and professional midwives should be able to identify maternal deaths. What must not happen, what should not happen, and from the WHO and the PHO, we try to uh, always have this concept of avoiding guilt because what happens in our countries? In our countries, usually, they put all the guilt and responsibility of death that the nurse injected and provided a dosage that was not correct. A physician didn't do all the procedures he should or she should do. In reality, it's not an individual process. What we need to have clear when we are talking about the vigilance and answer to maternal death, no matter which uh, technique is being used, be it Ramos, Birm, or the uh, authorities and national reports, what matters is that we should notify to try to avoid new deaths. If we sweep under the rug, the same things are going to keep happening. And we need to have clear that is common here that we look for um, for, for, for this situation. And the idea is to avoid this because a maternal death is not responsibility of a specific individual. It's a responsibility of all the service where this was um, received and in all, all the system and even beyond the system because this person might come from the community where there are social factors, social determiners that can have an influence on this that is happening. We are going to the next question. Uh, what are the Ramos exercises? Ramos is a technique that is complex, that is based on looking for all the maternal death cases uh, with women in fertile uh, range of age. Um, there is a huge work uh, that, and a lot of works that have been published. So the person that asked this question, this is not the moment to answer this question. So this person could uh, look for more information online. This is uh, something that is focused on looking for deaths of women that are in fertile range of age. The participation and or our community organization is important. What happens with the efficiencies to answer the demands of the users? Well, the committees of maternal death should have representatives from the civilian, um, the civil society that shows the opinions and feelings of communities and not any member of the uh, civil society. The uh, WHO says that to be part of these committees, this person that, that is part of this uh, community should have the, enough training to really be able to have a proper opinion and not to be manipulated within the committees of maternal deaths. We have reached 3.55. I'm going to give the floor to my colleague, Antonio Sanhuesa. So together with Dr. Susan Sehuja, director of CLAM, can close our session of today. Thanks a lot for your time. I would just like to thank the participation of our colleagues and each one of our colleagues of the health ministries that are present here. Thanks a lot for your participation. And I'm going to give the floor now to Dr. Susan. 
Thanks a lot, uh, Antonio, Aline, Bremen. Please allow me to start thanking those that are the strength of our regional team, because many times we think to do the work of PAHO. We have a team that in the countries, when we need technical cooperation, that has the quality that is necessary. I'm really happy to see that we are reaching almost 500 attendees today. And is it is important. And why should we talk about this? And by the way, I put the link of the web page that Aline mentioned about the berm that is in the chat. Why is it important? Well, because we are capable. We managed to visualize better the maternal debt and actually diminish them. And it's important not to lose focus that doing BIRM and doing all the methodologies, Ramos, whatever, as it was said by our famous colleague from Brazil, Escalente, he said, we in Brazil do this and we try to check. And there are many of the countries, as it was the case of Elini, that have had an excellent experience in their countries. And these are the people leading this work. But we've had done this work with the objective of understanding epidemiological changes. I'm telling you, for instance, the most simple thing today, it is normal that many women survive 42 days and then they can pass away. That is uh, a lot later. So um, if we don't understand, we can't tell where is the bottleneck where we cannot decide we cannot improve the health. The main objective of this intended search to understand where we have the maternal deaths is this. We want the community to make sure that we are transparent, that we make sure that this belongs to the family and we make sure that the work that we do and mortality. And as the directors have said in the beginning of the meeting, we can improve the estimates of the countries. One of the indexes that is the most important that you are going to find in any plan be it of health, be it social, as the PHO is maternal deaths. Maternal deaths is a topic of social equity, and we have to work towards this. And that is the mission. And methodologies can change, but the commitment must be there. And that's why I'm so happy that until the end, we are with so many attendees. I'd like to ask the attendees just one more thing. This and all the seminars of uh, PHO are uh, available, are for free. Send to the other colleagues, many colleagues are going to love to listen to Aline and all this presentation to get to know all the questions and understand more about this topic. To gather together as a team and check the presentations. This is an effort that is worth it because we deserve it and we want to have a more committed America towards the rights of women and life of women. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a great afternoon. I believe that is afternoon for everyone in the region and we can meet as soon as possible in another meeting. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.